Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Bradburn from TopTipBio.com and in this video tutorial you will learn how to create, customize and interpret box and whisker plots. So why are box and whisker plots useful? Box and whisker plots, also known as box plots, are a visualization style that give you a sense of the distribution of your data along the y-axis and are often used to identify outliers. They're especially useful for comparing two or more groups of data on the same graph. An example of a box and whisker plot can be shown on screen. On the plot there are five summaries of data. Firstly, the line inside the box indicates the median value. The bottom and top of the boxes represent the first and third quartiles. The distance in between these, i.e. the third minus the first quartile, is known as the interquartile range. Finally, the whiskers usually, but not always, indicate the minimum and maximum values. By looking at these points of interest on the box and whisker plots, it can tell you a lot about the data, such as whether the data are symmetrical or skewed, and if so, in what direction. However, box and whisker plots are not as good at representing the distribution of your dataset compared to a violin plot. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to create this box and whisker plot. So let's jump into GraphPad and begin the tutorial. So for the setup, you, I'm going to select a column, table and graph. I'm going to enter import data into a new table and enter replicate values stacked into columns and then click the create button. I'm just going to copy in the data set that I've prepared earlier. Specifically, this data contains two groups of 23 participants. What these are are BMI or body mass index measures. Since we have pasted in our data, we can then click on the connected graph sheet on the left hand side to open up the graph wizard. With the column graph family selected, you want to click on the box and violin tab. And to create a box and whisker plot, there are two versions. Firstly, there's the vertical box and whisker plot, and there's also an option to display the box and whisker plot horizontally. For this video tutorial, I'm going to select the vertical box and whisker plot. Under the drop down menu next to plot, here you can specify what the whiskers will represent. As mentioned in the introduction, the whiskers usually represent the minimum and maximum values. However, these can be changed here. There is an option to plot two key whiskers. These go 1.5 times the interquartile distance or to the highest or lowest point, whichever is shorter. And notice on the plot itself, those data points which are above and below the two key whiskers will be identified and these are classified as outliers. Additionally, you can also set the whiskers to be a percentile, so the 10th and 90th percentile. And there's also an option to plot minimum and maximum values as whiskers as well as superimposing all of the data points onto the box and whisker plot. So for this video tutorial I'm going to leave the superimposed data points on top of my box and whisker plot with minimum and maximum whiskers and click the OK button. So as you can currently see the plot itself looks very messy. It's dominated by the superimposed data points on top of the plot and it's hard to actually visualize the box and whisker plot. Also, you will realize the plot itself is currently in black and white. If you want to quickly change the color of the graph, you can use the change colors button at the top. This option is explored in more detail in a separate quick tip video tutorial. But let's carry on with changing the appearance of this box and whisker plot by going to the format graph button at the top. So with the format graph window open, it is here that you can change the appearance of the box and whisker plot, including the color of the bars and the boxes, as well as the symbols if you have superimposed them onto your graph. With my first group selected, I can change what the whiskers represent, as previously shown in the wizard. Again, I'm going to leave this to minimum and maximum and show all points. Under the bars and boxes header, you can change the fill color, the fill pattern, as well as the border thickness and the border color. Additionally, you can also tick the option to show the mean as a plus symbol. So by ticking this option, a plus symbol will be entered where the mean value is on the box and whisker plot. This may be useful when you're comparing and visualizing data that has been statistically compared with a test that compares the means of the groups. 
So always bear in mind when you're visualizing your data, how that corresponds to your approach to statistical analyses. So while we're here, I'm also going to change the border color of my first group to a dark blue. And then what I'm going to do is click the apply button to preview my changes. So it's worth mentioning here that you actually won't see the plus symbol within the box and whisker plot currently. And that is because it's dominated by the superimposed data points. So I will adjust this afterwards. I'm just going to toggle to my second group and I'm going to also show the mean as a plus symbol on this. And I'm going to change the border color to a purple color. And then click the apply button. You have a similar options underneath where it says symbols. If you have chosen to show all points on the plot, these will become active. So you can change the color, the shape and the size of the points itself. Also, you can adjust the placement, whether this be staggered, which is currently set, or aligned. So if I show you what aligned looks on the second group, aligned will align all of the data points to the X value. However, this doesn't make sense in this case because all of the X values are coming from this point here. That would mean that the data points are going to be stacked on top of each other. I always prefer to choose the staggered option so you can actually see all of the data points. So while we're here, I'm going to change the symbol of my second group to be a triangle and click the apply button to preview my changes. And additionally, I'm also going to change the color of the symbols themselves. And a useful thing about GraphPad is that as well as having solid colors in the palette above, there's also the options underneath to have transparent colors. By having a transparent color, it means that if there are any data points or points of interest that overlap, you can actually see behind the data points. Instead of currently, they're set to a solid black, so it's hard to actually see what is behind them. So for my second group, I'm going to select to have a transparency of 75% and select the same purple color, and then click the apply button. So notice now that in the second group, you can faintly see all of the data points. This currently works well since I don't have that many data points on my graph. If I have quite a lot of data points, you might think about not showing all of the data points and just having a box and whisker plot or alternatively using a violin plot, which will better show the distribution of the data set. So I'm going to toggle back to my first group here and I'm going to do a similar thing where I'm going to change the color of the symbols to be a transparent blue in this case and then click the apply button. And again, this looks a lot better now so we can actually see the box and whisker plot itself. The options for error bars and lines will not be available to customize in box and whisker plots. And then finally, in the additional options below, you can choose to have a right y-axis on the graph as well as the left y-axis. You can choose to show a figure legend. In this example, it doesn't make sense to have a figure legend shown since the group names are shown underneath each box and whisker plot. However, if you have multiple groups within your plot, you may wish to show a figure legend. So I'm currently happy with this graph and I'm going to click the OK button to return back to the graph. Another thing that I'd like to do on this graph is remove the white space underneath the box and whisker plot. And this will also zoom in on the plots themselves so you can see the plots a lot better. So to change the axes, you want to click on the Format Axes button at the top. And I'm going to go to the left Y axis tab. And then currently the range and interval is automatically determined by GraphPad. However, I'm going to untick this option and change the minimum value to be 15 and the maximum value to be 35. And I'm going to click the apply button. And then I'm going to click the OK button to return to the graph. So notice now that you can actually see the plus symbols within the box and whisker plot. And in this example, both the plus symbols are very close to their respected median values. Another thing I'd like to do to this graph is give it a y-axis title. So I'm going to change this to be BMI since that was what was measured. I'm also going to remove the x-axis title by clicking on this and pressing the backspace button on the keyboard. And this is because there's no need for an x-axis title in this example. And then to insert a graph title, I'm going to click on the data one. I'm just going to call this box and whisker. Another thing that you may wish to add onto this graph is lines and symbols to represent areas of statistical significance. For example, showing an asterisk in between these two groups. The ability to do this is explored in more detail in a separate quick tip video tutorial. 
So that concludes the video tutorial on the box and whisker plot. So in this video you've learned how to create and interpret a box and whisker plot. These types of plots are great to present the median, the interquartile range, the minimum and the maximum values within the same plot. They're also very useful to see if the data are symmetrical or skewed. An alternative to the box and whisker plot is the violin plot, which is explored in a separate video tutorial. You may want to consider using a violin plot over a box and whisker plot, since the violin plots do a better job at presenting the distribution of the data compared to a box and whisker plot.